hi guys welcome to my channel and thank you so much for being here i thought i would do a quick sit down i'm actually not sitting down i'm kneeling down because i don't have like so ever since we rearranged the house back to its normal place i don't have a place to sit and have these conversations so i was actually thinking i need to get like a nice occasional chair to put here and i'm gonna make this little corner my sit down um spot but i thought i would do like a sit down i a couple of weeks ago days ago i can't remember i had asked on youtube what kind of sit downs would you guys like for me to do and everyone obviously had different um answers and some of the suggestions not even some most of the suggestions are not enough like this one from Mununtumi so Bazibuko is um what is intentional parenting to you and how has therapy changed your perspective and perspective of life that's not enough for me to sit down for 30 minutes and talk about so i thought i'd just like make it like a q and a even though it's not a q i guess it is a q and a so welcome to a q and a an updated one a 2023 q and a and i hope that you guys enjoy this one and let's get into it <music> So since I was talking about Dunon Dumiso Vele, I'll start with Dunon Dumiso's question. She's got about five questions. Um, I'm going to answer two because the other three, I feel like I may have covered them. Cool. So the first one is what is intentional parenting to you? So for me, intentional parenting is just being intentional, <laughs> but it is raising my children in an environment where they know that everything is done out of love. We have conversations, uncomfortable conversations. Um, I apologize when I'm wrong. I say when I'm wrong, because I think one thing our parents didn't get right is admitting when they're wrong. I don't know what it is about admitting to a child or anyone else that you're wrong and you apologize for it. So for me, intentional parenting is literally about being able to have uncomfortable conversations with my children whether it's I'm the one having the conversation and I'm the one being told about a situation that I did. Obviously, Umilan is too young to have those conversations with me, but Alwande, I strive to make sure that she can come to me and say, I don't like the way you speak to me, you spoke to me, Zolo, Mami, or I don't like this. Intentional parenting means that I am setting aside time in my busy day to spend with my children. I... For me, I didn't spend a lot of time with my mother growing up, but the moments, the some of the most amazing moments was when my mom was around. So I realized how important it is when you're an adult to, to have those moments with your mother. We are all busy, especially when you're a single parent, literally the whole household depends on you. But I always make sure in a day, I give my children 30 minutes to an hour, making sure that it's us time. And then on weekends, it's obviously easier because um, we have more time, but intentional parenting for me means that being intentional in everything I do for these children. Oh, Johannesburg flies. Okay, I just lit my citronella candle. I hope it works. But yeah, intentional parenting is basically, um, I want my children to know how I feel about them, being intentional, telling them every day that I love them, hugging them, kissing them. For me, it's being, it's doing all the things that I didn't get as a child. But I mean, I know that my mom loved me. It's just that their, that generation was raised differently and we are now, we, we were raised differently. But now I want to be intentional about being different on the things that I do and how I handle my children. Um, the other question from Manon Dumiso is, how has therapy changed my perspective and perception of life? I am only in week two of therapy by the time you guys watch this i probably would have been on week four of therapy um so i don't really have much the first time i did therapy was in 2005 when my boyfriend at the time was murdered my mom did not know what to do with me i oh i wanted to take my own life and i think that shook my mom so she sent me to therapy the second time i was in therapy i was in a physically abusive relationship so i went to therapy because you know i was trying to heal from that so every time i've been to therapy it has always been for a specific reason i've never been to therapy for vibes and for the first time in my life i'm in therapy for vibes and i've had two sessions with my therapist i'm very lucky to have found someone that i clicked with on session one um i know that it's hard to find someone to just to to to, to click with and 
so far what she's making me realize is that i need to be a bit softer and kinder to myself um as a single mom with two dipped beads you um society obviously will tell tells me every day that i should have chosen better baby daddies and um, what did i do wrong you know like you blame yourself for the decisions that other people made and i think my therapist in the two sessions that we've spoken about she's making me making, making me realize that i need to be softer and kinder to myself and find a way to forgive myself we're obviously still unpacking um that so i'm excited so i can't really say it has changed my life or my perspective on life but i can see that it's going to be a good year it's going to be a year where i unravel but in a good way i've been unraveling for the past however many years but not in a good way not in a way that i'm proud of so i'm looking forward to unraveling i'm looking forward to getting to know myself i'm looking forward to be kinder to myself and the the decisions and choices that i've made yeah i'm looking forward to more therapy sessions uh you guys will definitely i will update you on my progress with therapy but it's something that i have decided to put money away for um, I've, I've cut down on a lot of things. I'm cutting down on a lot of entertainment. If you watch my video on my vision board, you will know that I actually i am making a conscious decision to even cut down on how often I see my friends so that I'm just able to save money and take care of my mental um, health. So I'll, I'll update you, Nondu. Um, look at me just calling you Nondu. It's just that I'm from Durban and your name, Nondu Misa Mazibugo, that's such a Durban name. Um, and in Durban, oh, no, do me, so we call them, oh, no, do, but I'm so sorry if that's not your, the situation. Um, yeah, I'll update you, no, do me, so, and give me three months, I'll come back and tell you how therapy is changing my perspective, my perspective on life. Kukuma, kakula, my, my, how I budget, monthly resets, and if I don't mind New Year's resolutions or bucket list, um, Okay, monthly reset. I don't really do those. I don't really have them. <laughs> Maybe I should. Google, I should definitely start doing those. Actually, I will. You know what? I will. This year, bucket list, New Year's resolutions. Um, I don't want to speak too much on this because by the time you guys watch this, you would have seen my vision board um, video. So, Google, I hope that you actually did watch my, video, my vision board video. So, you'll see my resolutions and my goals for this year. And then how I budget. To be honest, I don't budget. Um, but it is something that I am trying to do this year. I am trying to be very, very disciplined with my finances. Actually, all three of your, all the two, the monthly reset question, I'll definitely, um, suggestions I'll definitely do. But the other two questions are things that I covered on my vision board video. I hope that you watched it. Uh, but I am trying to be very disciplined when it comes to my finances this year. I have a big plans um, news resolutions one of the news resolutions I have is to save um, up for transfer cost I'm trying to buy a house in the next year or two um, so I am trying to be very disciplined with my finances so going back to budgeting I've never really been someone who budgets I am a once the bills are paid <laughs> let's rack this up but this year I'm trying to be Okay, once the bills are paid, there's no need to finish your money. You still have a whole month to survive. I want to be one of those people who are not affected by Mambara Weekend. And let's see how that goes. Unyele Tihanyani wants a chit chat on when you were really in love and what led to the breakup. You know, I don't know. I think for me, it's something I guess I need to work on. I've been in four relationships in my entire life and because most of my relationships do end in a very hostile horrible manner when i think about them i'm always just like Ugh, i didn't even love this person but i actually really did so i probably need to think about one or two people that in the four people that i was in a relationship with that i really loved where i was really in love and what led to the breakup so i'll probably that i can actually do a separate video on i don't know we'll see but uh, I don't really like talking about my love life or lack thereof because I haven't really been lucky in that department.
Um, I think Galani wants to know love lessons that I've learned and how I maintain friendships. I think I'll talk more about the maintaining friendship than the love lessons because with love, as mentioned earlier, the minute I break up with someone, I have so much hate for them. I'm not even going to try and make myself seem like, oh, love and light. There is no love and light here. The minute we break up, I never want to see you, have anything to do with you. So I try to not think about them post-breakup. But um, how I maintain friendships, I've been very lucky not to have to have the most amazing friends who understand and know that with adulting we will not be talking every day we will drift apart we'll see each other every day we'll see each other every week but how i try to maintain my friendships is at least i check on my friends regularly um when something uh, what i've learned over the years is that when you think about something when you think about someone call them immediately because there's nothing as as horrible as someone calling you while you thought about them early that morning and you being like oh you know i've been thinking about you now it seems like a lie so i immediately when i think about someone or when something reminds me of one of my friends i call them imme immediately and also i think what helps maintain my friendships is that my friends and i have really honest conversations so whether we see each other once a week once a month or once a year when we do see each other the conversations are so intense and are so honest and are so vulnerable that you when you leave you leave with a i always leave with a piece of my friend whoever friend i'm with i always leave with a piece of them i try very hard to not have and not even i try very hard i don't have surface friendships i i know that there are people who have like friends in their lives where they be like oh yeah this is not really like i wouldn't really call them my friend but it's someone i have around i don't have those if i have you if i call you if you are my phone you're my friend so whenever i meet with any of those girls or even guys that do have male friends i do leave a piece of me with them and i do leave with a piece of them that will last enough for me to know what's happening or have an idea what's happening in your life until i see you again maintaining friendships is actually quite hard when you are um, older i'm a mom so my focus is my children some of my friends are in relationships some are married so their focus are their husbands and their families so it's just understanding that i'm not going to be seeing you every day i'm not going to be talking to you every day but it's being intentional about making time like me and i have a friend where i'm just like friend what are you doing on the first of march if I see that nah, I don't have anything going on on the 1st of March, I will ask a friend, what are you doing on the 1st of March? And the friend will be like, I'm actually not doing anything. Okay, do you want to come over? Can I come over? Let's do something. And another thing for me that helps is that I've got friends who are very simple, as simple as I am. So we don't have to go to an expensive restaurant. Literally having a picnic at the garden, as long as I'm with you and as long as I see you is enough for me. And I'm very lucky to have friends who also feel and think the same. So the maintaining friendship part, I think I've, I don't know if I do anything or do much, but I have to say that I'm very lucky to have friends who are just as intentional about me as I am about, about them. Ooh, please give... Uh, oh, Ntabeleng Kechane. Or Kechane, I'm not so... Um, excuse me if I'm pronouncing your surname wrong. Please give us an update, a year update, about everything that you have learned about a, being a full-time mom with two children. What are the things that you do now that you didn't think that you could do? I remember one of your last year's videos when you spoke about how motherhood didn't come naturally to you. Do you think motherly instincts have fully kicked in? Do you still panic when your babies are sick? Or do you know exactly what to do? I hope this makes sense. First, in Tabilang. I did this video of motherhood doesn't come naturally to me in 2021 when I just started this channel. So you've been here since. And I remember I did it early 2021. So the fact that you've been here since, not only have you been here since, okay, wait, not only have you been here since, but you remember that, girl. Yo, a year update is living, being a full-time mom to two children. I think that when I took these children last year, I think that in my head I had it all figured out. I was just going to, we were going to do this. We were going to do that. We we're going to have play dates. We we're going to do, you know? And then when I couldn't do that, that's when I started having breakdowns last year. Like if you go back to my videos early last year, I was probably breaking down in every vlog. Um, and I think it's because that, A, I thought that I was going to have co-parents because both my baby daddy's families made it seem as if the reason why they know a part of my children's life is because we were in Durban. So I thought that coming to Joburg meant that, oh, okay, then I'm going to have co-parents in, like, the paternal parents, the paternal grandparents were going to be involved. So 
realizing that no they actually lied about that they're not going to be involved they're just as sick as their children they're just as evil as their children that for me was a the first blow second blow was realizing the finances part like i thought because you know when you live at home you have a little bit more money now i'm paying rent full rent i'm paying school fees i run this um primary school fees and high school school fees the difference is like this much finances the finances part of it killed me the finances part i was just like what i can't even take you guys out for ice cream so now when you're like what are the things that you thought that you couldn't do that you do is now that i'm conscious about money and i'm conscious about wanting to do things now, another thing when we moved in here and realizing that oh i'm doing this by myself all these paternal um, side of the family is gonna, not going to be involved i try to overcompensate especially with alwande if you watch the first three four months of, of my vlogs from 2021 you will see how much i was spending on alwande and milani you will see how much i was just like overcompensating and now i've realized that there's no need i realized that children are very happy with the little things now when i feel like okay cool my kids are not okay i'm like let's go get ice cream you should see how happy they are so i think one of the lessons i've learned is that i don't need to overcompensate my, me being around is enough for my children so that's great and when you say does my motherly instinct kick in i have to say it's better than it was in 2021 um when my children are sick do i know do i know what to do no i don't <laughs> when I, my children are sick i panic i call my mother my mother is a nurse luckily so she's always able to calm me down i call norma my sister oh norma is a very analytical person so if you tell her that this is happening she'll go google she'll do this me on the other hand i'm a panicker like when something happens my first instinct is to panic so having people that i can call helps and last year um, mid last year i found a doctor that is not far from my place that is also affordable so now when my child is sick i don't stress about having to having to need 2000 rand for a consultation the doctor not far from me is very affordable so i'm able to think but i don't think that my motherly instinct have, has kicked in fully and i'm not sure if it ever will but i'm intentional about wanting it to kick in i'm intentional about when my child is going through something i want to actually be involved and help out i hope that um answers you shirley k hi manda a makeup routine please girl do you believe in me i'm not sure <laughs> i'm not sure about this one but i'll try one day i'll try how about oh, sin, see, po, yo, yo, one, eh? how about you tell us how you're handling your finances since the last time you did the other financial video Snesipo, let me tell you something. Nah, I'm not someone who's always gonna save money. I'm someone who believes that people need to pay me more. So when I did that video, my first financial video with Andy Swa, I only had one stream of income, which was which was my salary. And then I got monetized, and then I got my first paycheck from YouTube in May. And then my finances has changed since. So I haven't really done anything differently it's just that i've gotten a second stream of income so i don't want i don't like advising people to get a second stream of income a third stream of income because that's just capitalism and i don't like it i do feel like we should just be able to work in places that pay us enough to survive but my finances the only thing that has changed or has improved my finances is literally being able to have a second stream of income which is youtube i did quit my full-time job last year in september and um obviously things have changed and they've been a little bit more rough but i'm still living with my children i'm still able to cope and we're still living in the same house still living in the, the same kind of lifestyle that we were um living so and and nakona it's freelance man like i freelance not even a freelance i i'm i after i quit my job with um my full-time com the company i was with i think i was unemployed for about a month where i was not doing anything but luckily that month was october and i put all my focus on my youtube channel and i did vlogtober and vlogtober was so amazing that the money i got for it was able to then push me through then in november november december january we are still in january but by the time you guys watch this video it's going to be february i got like a freelance contract for three months with this company at this moment in time i'm speaking to you the 27th of january they haven't said anything about renewing it <laughs> so i am kind of nervous but not really i feel like god's got my back i'm at peace about that so um i have do have like an income coming in even though it's not 
what it what i'm used to but it is something that pays my bills and then i do have obviously youtube again okay? so that's the only thing i would say that my eyes changed about my finances is just that i was able to get like a second stream of income which has been youtube otherwise i'm not good at saving i'm not good at budgeting i'm just not good with money to nyembe ati um please share how you manage to save and what you're saving for now <laughs> I can't save <laughs> i struggle to save to lele but i want to start saving i think in march april i want to start saving because you know the first for me i don't know if it's for you it's like that for you guys but the first three months of every year is always so tough financially because of how basically i overspent in december so i think as from march april i want to save for i want to buy a house I'm very ambitious, but I want to buy a home for my children. So right now, this year, I am saving. Well, I'm going to start saving for um, transfer costs, a deposit if I can. I'm being a little bit ambitious. But um, I mean, outside YouTube, I'm really hoping to start working with brands. Mother's Day is coming up. I'm a mother. I'm hoping brands reach out to me. I had a couple of brands I worked with over the festive season. Christmas, holiday, family. It was fun. I mean, the money was but the fact that i'm start, I'm starting to get recognized by brands like pick and pay the clathon shell even though the money was but the fact that i'm being recognized by those brands means that we're going somewhere so mother's day is coming up and i'm really really hoping that i get like a life-changing campaign so that i put all of that into my um savings for a, a house well, you know, a deposit or transfer cost at least something. So that's what I'm saving for. But I haven't really started saving. My savings account is on a minus. Louisiana, Angelina, let's talk about your dating plans. What are you doing to prepare to put yourself out there to be ready when love comes? We are in our Mokoti era, remember? <laughs> I am. I am willing to date. I love how you ask, what am I doing to put myself out there? That's a very good question because I'm such a, my husband's going to meet me. If it's meant to be, it's meant to be. But when I think about it, he's not going to come knocking at my house. I mean, ideally, I would love for him to come knock. <laughs> but it's not going to happen realistically. But my dating plans, it's so crazy how, I mentioned this on my vision board um, video, but it's so crazy how last year, like as Louisa, Louisa, oh, I'm sorry, I said Louisiana, Louisa, as Louisa is saying, um, last year I was busy in my Makoti era, and then this year when I started opening my DMs on Instagram and Twitter, I have so many potential dates, and I was just like, oh, wow, guys, when you actually put things out there and speak to the universe, the universe listens, you know, so I have had a couple of dates. Well, I have had a couple of people asking me out on a date, but the more I talk to these people, the more I'm just like, mm, maybe I'm not so ready. But I think that I want to use the first half of the year to get my shit together, get my life together. As mentioned earlier on, I started therapy. So I also want to talk to my therapist about dating. Um, so that's how I'm preparing for it. I'm talking to my therapist about it. <laughs> and um, my plans to put myself out there. Yo, Louisa. She says, I guess I'm I, I'm not I'm not against um dating apps. I might join not Tinder though. Definitely not, not Tinder. I've been on Tinder before. It was trash. It was just people the caliber of men on Tinder are just but I do have a couple of friends who've made amazing partners on Tinder. It's just that not personally it hasn't been. So I don't know what I'm gonna do to put myself out there, but I'm definitely gonna join one or two dating apps. I'm going to I don't want to go out more. I did a lot of going out last year and I didn't even meet one. I mean, I met a couple of men, but none of them were potential husbands. Um, I don't know. My I don't know, babe. I don't know. But I, I am definitely ready for... Oh, I, I'm ready to start putting myself out there. Oh, I'm ready for so, soft love. I'm ready for safe love. I'm ready for someone who's going to love me wholeheartedly accept me for who i am and just do life with me and travel with me do things with me i'm ready for that but let's say we're going to tackle that around may june july let's get seven eleven i mean oh i love your name i've never heard of it before seven eleven i mean he's suggesting that i do a makeup look whilst drunk that should be fun i'll i'll definitely try that one 
dating as a single parent to cheleni i've done two videos on dating as a single parent i will link them below um it's the pits that's all i'm gonna say but i'll link my other two videos before, below no volas tole i hope you do see my comments of course i'm sorry maybe i'll be asking for more than you from you but can you do a topic on what you think feminine male fathering is it a good or bad thing i think i think this will help single mom raising boys oh no for like this is i've never actually heard of this term feminine male fathering i've never heard of this term but i've got a couple of friends who have boys and i think that this would be such a great i've got a couple of friends who are single mothers to boys so i think this would be such a great topic um for them i will i'll probably just try to have a sit down with my um with my boy moms Yo, this is so interesting. I'll definitely hear out my boy moms. I've got a friend, Lucia. She's got a son who's 14. She's raising her him by herself as a single mother. I think she'll be perfect for this. And my other friends... Oh, I've got another friend, Uvoyi. She's got an 18-year-old. He was in matric last year. Oh, and, and this is a great... I'm going to get... I'm going to bring my, my boy moms... Boy mom friends. Boy moms together and we definitely this is a nice topic to tackle so watch this space non fula and thank you so much for the suggestion i obviously i'm a girl mom i would have never thought of this but i've never even heard of this term and now i'm very interested and i'm intrigued no see paul do watch anna i believe everything has its advantages and disadvantages would you like to talk about the advantage of, of the advantages of raising your children alone yeah for sure definitely Let's talk about that. The advantages, the biggest advantage of raising my children alone is that should I get a life-changing opportunity to move to any city, any country, I don't have to talk to anybody except my children. I will sit my children down, especially Alwande, and say, listen, mommy has received this opportunity. It's going to be life-changing for everyone involved. So let's pack our bags and move. You know, raising my children alone um, the advantage is, is that, that I just actually just don't need to consult with anyone when it comes to any decisions that I make. I will obviously consult with my mom, my sister, when it comes to the struggles that maybe I'm facing. But when it comes to decisions that will better, like which school I take my child. So, um, I don't know if I've ever mentioned this before, but Milani's dad and I did try to co-parent in 2020. We did try to co-parent and during our co-parenting time i remember i was talking to him about the stresses i was under because i was looking for a good school for alwande i've always been very intentional and very direct about wanting alwande to go to a private school because i didn't i went to a very disadvantaged school and i don't like how things were done there my sister went to a private school and i love how you know everything turned out for her so i'm always just like She's Alwande, my children, both of them are going to go to a private school. So I remember one time having a conversation with Milani's dad and just telling him that, you know, I'm so stressed out about which school Alwande is going to go to that I can also afford. And then he says to me, oh, but there's no difference between public school and private schools. Listen. Maybe there isn't a difference between public school and private schools, but trust me, there's a difference between the school I went to and the school my sister went to. And that's the only reference that I have. And I was just like, when he said that, I was just like, okay, cool, it's cool. But at the end of the day, it's my decision to make anyway. And, but then in him saying that, it made me realize that, yo, me and him are going to struggle then when it's time to choose a school for Milani because he's got, you know, this belief that, he goes by and he's respectful respectfully so he's he's he can have his beliefs and opinions and i have this one so at that time i was just like fuck it's going to be a struggle in the next however many years when it's time for milani to go to school and i guess a couple of months later he showed his ass he's shown that he actually doesn't want to co-parent he doesn't want to be part of milani's life so now that for me was a bit of a relief that oh okay cool then i guess i'm the only one who's gonna who's left to choose a school for milani and um, also, Milani's dad, um, if you don't know, um, got a restraining order against me. So last year, no, 2021, when I served him maintenance papers, 
for as a retaliation he then went and served me a restraining um a protection order so we went to court to go discuss that protection order well there was nothing really to discuss because i was just like whatever he says that i did i did it give him the give him the restraining order they gave him the restraining order and it's valid for five years um so that was in 2021 in march so basically legally me and him can't have any type of communication up until march 2026 but by then that's going to be the year where i would have chosen a primary school for milani anyway so whether he wants to come back and co-parent or not he can't legally he can't because he made the decision that he wanted a restraining order so there's so many i'm actually smiling thinking about this because at that time i was hurt you know when you're hurt and you're just like to change positions oh you know when you're just so hurt and you're just like you want to be swinging order against me what did i do bro like i just served you maintenance papers and i wouldn't have served you maintenance papers if you were paying maintenance but i was just like it was hurt it was painful but now i'm just like mm -hmm. actually it works out in my favor because i get to raise milani how i want to for the next six well five years and by the time he decides by the time the, the restraining order expires milani will be in primary school so that's another advantage there's so many advantages of raising my children by myself you guys like i get to make decisions that i obviously believe are good for them and i don't have anyone to discuss it with i don't have anyone who's going to give me their um stupid opinions or whatever so that for me has been such a blessing in disguise so i have to raise my children alone is that i get to choose what's best for them and the only people i need to discuss it with is them well, in this case, Alwande. Milani, I will discuss it with her when she's old enough to have these discussions. So being a single parent is hard. Being a single mother is hard. But I love that um, Nos Piwe, um, yeah, Nos Piwo raised this because there are so many, there are advantages of raising your children by yourself. Patience, ma m patience and pizza. Um, your favorite items discovered in 2022 be it perfume facial items or clothing items that actually I can do a whole video on Thank you for the suggestions. How do you do your makeup? You know what you guys Sisa Sisanda Shulan. Oh guys Someone please buy me an occasional chair because this if y'all want me to do more sit downs I'm gonna need an occasional chair because oh, this is uncomfortable Sisanda Shulani, how do you do your makeup? You are like the third person who's interested in my makeup So clearly guys Nathan makeup him like, do you really think I look nice with my makeup? <laughs> then I will do a makeup. I think in one of my vlogs, hmm, I have a campaign coming up with this Chinese company. I think, I don't know. I think in one of my vlogs, I'll do like how I do my makeup. I'm so shocked that you guys like my makeup because I, I don't rate my makeup, but I do like it when I have makeup. So thank you. Your status. Seven, seven, your stance on religion, Christianity, church. Um, I'm not the most religious person. I think that you guys have probably seen that. Um, there's probably out of all the vlogs that I've done, you have might have seen me in church once. I go to church once a year, and that is Easter. That Easter Easter Sunday, I go to church, and the reason why I go to church on Easter Sunday is because the sermon, yeah, Easter Sunday, is so reviving. Like it revives me too. My it's it's like a new year for me because it's I guess it's when like Jesus rises, and then the sermon is different, the vibe is different. So I go to church once a year. Um, I used to go to church, so I was raised Christian. So let me just try to actually my grandmother is a sangoma she's been a sangoma since she was 16 years old ne? but we were raised christian and i think for me sometimes i always hear people like talking trash about the traditional um uh, um aspect of black lives you know and i'm always just like you guys know that they can coexist you know tradition and um western cultural the god the churches and stuff you know that they can coexist i believe in that because that's how i was raised i was raised by a sangoma who encouraged us to go to church my grandmother is a sangoma but like we grew up in a catholic church we did everything that has been done if you grew up in a catholic i think anglican is also similar to catholic catholics you know what i'm talking about 
we did all of it. Now, man, Jay, once in a while, I still go to a Catholic church. So my views on that is that I do go to church. Obviously, I believe in God. I definitely believe in God. You guys would have heard, heard me talk about God probably on almost on every vlog. I believe in God. I believe in my ancestors as well. So my thing with church is that as as I grew up in the in a Catholic church, and one of my aunts who was not you know the best person was the person who used to go to church probably like three times a week, and but in the house she was not what she preached in the church. So I think for me I grew up then thinking about okay so church people are fake because if this person who goes to church three four times a week she's got these positions at church but she is one of the most evil people that i know make it make sense and i think my then my perception of church changed but my belief in god didn't change it was just the church itself i was just like okay i don't like this because and i was young i think i was like nine or ten i was just like i made the decisions that i don't like this because Actually, a lot of people in this church, in this room, are not good people, you know? And the older I grew up, the more people who would hurt me the most would be churchgoers. I don't like, obviously, talking a lot about Milani's side of the family, but let me tell you something. Milani's dad, there is no verse in the Bible that he doesn't know. Milani's dad, Milani's family, are church people to the core. But, do their actions show? They have a child that they've chosen to desert, you know? So it's that for me that there are situations where I'm just like, okay, maybe church is not so bad. And then something's happened in my life where I'm just like, this whole family, you are preaching the word every single day. The Lord, this, the Lord, this, the Lord, this. But you have deserted your own blood. I remember um, I, was, I was invited to some show in 2021 and then there's a priest who was there uh, we were talking about basically the, the the difficulties of single parenting and the priest was there um to sh there was a psychologist there was me and there was a priest and the one of the things that the priest said was everyone is a child of god so if you are a deadbeat or you're a deadbeat family and you claim to believe in god and you claim that you are a child of god but you can desert your own child how would you feel if god deserted you because that's exactly what you've done like you have deserting your own blood you've deserting your own child and for me it hit hard that family is such church driven people they are at church probably 10 times a, a week but they've deserted their own child they have said some of the most evil things to me like if you go back to some of the video where i had a chat with Milani's paternal grandmother, some of the things she was saying about Milani herself as her own blood. I mean, that's Milani's, that's her grandchild. It's her blood. The things that she said about it. So I think for me, the older I grow, the more I'm just like, church, I guess, is just a facade. What is more important is who you are and what you believe in. I worship the Lord in my own house. I've got my views when it comes to church and people who. I'm a church goer and people who are loud about their religion and people who are loud about their love for God, they kind of scare me a bit. I love God. I believe in God. I also believe in my ancestors and I believe in Christianity to a certain extent. Um, but above all, I believe in God. And I think this, obviously, my view about church has been warped from my experiences with people who claim to love church so much for people who claim to love God so much, but they don't live the God's word. They don't live God's word. So I just started then believing, but then what's the point, you know, that's my, my opinion, you guys, like you, obviously you, you can disagree, but I want, I do believe in God and my children also, we are raised in a, in a, we, we were raised in a home where you believe in ancestors and you believe in God. We go to church, we pray, we do all of those things. And I don't think I'm any different from someone who goes to church every Sunday. Just because you choose to go to church every Sunday and you're this religious person who does things by the, the word of God. Um, word of God doesn't make you that different from me because I only go to church for my benefit, which is to go feel revived which is every easter so for our easter vlog you guys will see us at church but i'll say that i'm not a church person i don't know if i would call myself a religious person i'm a believer 
like i'm a believer in the higher power i believe in god and i will always be and i'm raising my children to be believers as well and they are they do like I've, i i hear the way alwanda speaks and i'm like my mommy did a good job my grandmother has done a good job and i'm also doing a good job in raising her to have these beliefs um obviously milani as well she's going to have those beliefs milani sees us praying it's still a bit of a joke for milani but she sees us praying and sometimes she takes it seriously sometimes she just laughs it off but it just it shows me that she knows but this is what we do and um i still believe in my ancestors will forever believe in my ancestors i will be an ancestor one day and i want my children to continue believing in me and believing that you know i'm there for them and i've got their back i'm a hectic hectic believer in the lord above i'm a hectic believer in my ancestors i'm a hectic believer in the higher power like there's absolutely no way my life has gone the way it has without anyone um taking a lead and it's not me it's definitely god so i do believe in that and i appreciate your question and i appreciate the way you asked your question i just want to address you by your name quickly um Spenele. i completely uh, appreciate the way you asked your question and i hope that the way i answered it and also if you are not the person that i've described that goes to church please don't take offense because i know a lot of people like taking offense in the things that i say but as mentioned these are my experiences this is what i've experienced people who claim to go to church every sunday or every day and people who claim to love god but they turn around and don't live the word of god like i will never not understand how i will never understand i mean how you can desert your own children and claim to be the man of god make it make sense but that is it from i got about 99 comments but um the questions were not as much as i thought they would be it's mostly suggestions on truth or dare spicy noodle challenge um two truths and a lie and stuff so i will definitely make up tutorials i'll definitely be trying to incorporate uh, most of these things in my upcoming videos i always always appreciate you guys suggestions and i take them in and i can't wait to actually try most of them out because some of them seem fun except the spicy noodle challenge that's not fun at all but i'm definitely gonna try i hope that you guys enjoyed this little mini life update i hope that you enjoyed this video thank you so much for watching and i'll see you next time